We've been trying to plan a weekend for Corey and Sammy from Avid CNC to visit the farm for the better part of a year now, and thought that our upcoming Halloween barn party would be a great weekend to finally make it happen. Thought that this would also be a great chance to work on some decorations for the party with them. After I gave them a rundown on what a CNC machine is and how they work, Corey jumped in on cutting out an extra spooky Halloween scene that Kelly designed for the backdrop behind the band. Okay, obviously I'm joking. There are the CNC pros, and I was picking their brains all weekend on tips and different questions I had on the machines. It's pretty sweet having two members of the Avid CNC tech support department on location in the barn at your beck and call. Sammy's first project was cutting a bunch of bats on the plasma table to string together as a garland. She was a monster on the grinder. I swear she had that thing running for three hours straight, cleaning up all the plasma cut edges and giving the bats a polished look. It was the day before the party, and more barn prep and cleaning help was starting to show up. My project that I'm about to taco about is a quick and dirty fire pit design that I threw together for the gravel driveway outside the barn. I designed an eight-sided dish with fold lights cut into it and a stand to hold it off the ground about 20 inches or so. It all fit on a one sheet of 3 16th inch plate. I'll throw the DXF file in the description below if you want to take a look. Already wanting to fold up. Oh yeah, well that's good. I'm starting to get a little bit of an audience as the cleaning crew said they needed to make sure the beer keg and tap was working all right. It helped a lot to even out the bins by setting the dish upside down on my welding table. That's better. You like it or not like it? I can keep doing it. I'm kind of dumb, but I'll keep doing it. Don't make I thought I might as well take advantage of all these people standing around and ask them to help me hang up my sign I made for Maker Faire. Been wanting to do this for a while, but couldn't figure out how I was going to get it done by myself.
center? Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. I used to go like way far. Yeah. Like an eighth of a center. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, totally. Leave that there. That's awesome, Justin. That's good. I got the rest of the fold lines and stand weld it up, then set it upright on the ground to weld on the perimeter pieces. Corey was making some good progress on the witchy backdrop. We chained him to the CNC table and told him he couldn't have dinner until he finished cutting all nine sheets of the plywood. In the meantime, Sammy and I got the dueling grinders going. Sammy cut some more bats and I had cut a base for the fire pit that we were cleaning up. Kelly was over getting saucy in the corner. It was pretty cool. At one point we had both CNC tables and the welder all going at once. It's usually just me working in the barn, so I've never had that happen before. Yeah, my EE professor though would be very disappointed at the length of these wires. Uh, Tim dropped off the electronics to put together, which control the meat smoker that Pat was planning on running all night. And we wrote to Dave and Athena into chaining bats together. I asked Dave what the ratio of bats chained together per beer drink was. And he said instead of bats per beer, I should be asking how many beers per bat. Corey finished cutting the last sheet of plywood. So we unchained them from the routing table and gave everything a coat of primer. Lastly, after everyone had left, Pat got the new smoker going and ready for two giant briskets. I'll be honest, I did not see this sunrise, but luckily Pat did and he didn't fall asleep while I was cooking the meat all night. Kelly and I were out here not too much later though, putting the black coat of paint on the backdrop. One last thing I wanted to do before the party was hang some lights along the driveway. I cut and bent some rebar and welded a nut to the end that I could zip tie the lights to. The cleaning crew from the previous day had morphed into the decorations crew, which were looking great. There you go. <laughs> right in the garbage. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I realized my fire pit wasn't very Halloween themed, so I stole one of Sammy's bats. Perfect. Corey had the great idea to line up and attach the sheets of plywood together with dog bone joints. He cut three different sizes and Sammy test fit them all to see which yep. was the best fit. Have that go across uh, each section and then we'll tip it up like that. Well, it was just the fact that there's three methods of a lot, it just becomes like sensory overload. Yeah, I know, I should have spread that out a bit more. But... Okay. Yeah. We flipped over all the backdrop pieces 
and Cory cut a bunch more dog bones after deciding on the best tolerances. They worked really well for pulling the sheets of plywood in tight with each other. The plan has been to backlight the backdrop, since it will be standing off the wall a couple inches, and Corey started aligning the perimeter with LED lighting. While he was working on that, Sammy and I screwed some 2x4s across all the seams. It was all hands on deck for tipping the backdrop up. It was just about perfect timing because the band was patiently waiting to start setting up. Tammy also got her bat song, which turned out really nice. And I covered up the dog bones with a little bit of black paint. The last project Sammy wanted to work on was milling some tombstones out of two inch foam insulation. And this stuff cut like a hot knife through butter. It's so quiet compared to wood. Sammy applied the spray paint, it had this cool effect where it melted the foam a tiny bit and almost made it look more aged and like stone. I thought they looked so perfect in the lawn, this is a great idea. And it was just in time for people to start filing in. I can't thank Sammy and Corey enough for spending their weekend down here, working their butts off. I don't know if they quite knew what they were getting themselves into when they agreed to come down. But I had a blast working on all our projects with them and really appreciated all their work. Sammy will be putting a video up on these projects on Avid's channel as well, so be sure to check that out for her perspective. I think the party was my favorite night of 2019 so far. It just couldn't have been more fun or more perfect. I gotta thank Dave and Athena, Gary and Cindy, my parents Rod and Kim, and my wife Kelly for making it all happen. And the band just killed it. They brought so much energy to the barn playing all the hits from the 80s for over three hours. So a big shout out to the Fat Bottom Girls for rocking my barn on this All Hallows Eve of 2019.